Hey, this is Kayla Adams talking to you from CRS 2015. Welcome to day 54. <laughs> <laughs> it feels long, doesn't it? <laughs> and I got here this morning, I was like, have I been here all month? Like, it's just crazy. When I looked through your bio, a sentence that popped out for me was, nothing but music would make me happy. Do you remember when you realized that? Yes, um, that would have been right after I went on this year-long tour. Uh, it was like a youth outreach type thing. It was right after I got done with that that I realized, okay, I love living out of a suitcase. I love all of the things that make it hard, and the stage part's the easy part. So I knew at that point that I had to follow that dream. The stage part is the easy part. For a lot of people, that will sound strange because they'll think... <laughs> You just hang out all day, and then you're on stage, and that's where the work happens. Can you explain how that's not true? <laughs> yeah, it's actually quite the opposite. Um, I feel like I speak for most artists when I say that, you know, the rehearsals and the actual part where you play music, that's usually what comes easiest to us. And it's, it's the other things. It's the interviews and, you know, the early morning radio shows and the photo shoots and, you know, pretending like you're a model. Um, <laughs> it can be those things that don't always come as naturally to us. Yeah. Is that something you felt, do you have a comfort zone still? Because if you travel a lot, and I know this, I've traveled a lot, and I feel I don't really have a comfort zone. Like everywhere still, is just kind of home yeah, to you. Yeah, wherever you are, that's yes. just what's going on at the time. Yes. Do I've, you still feel that too, or do you still feel like a little bit, there's a little comfort zone somewhere? No, you know, I really don't get homesick. I never have. I'm very much like that. In the moment, wherever I'm staying that night is home. <laughs> I've kind of always been like that, though. Yeah. I've caught myself referring to a hotel room as, oh, I'm going to go home. And yeah. I mean, I mean the hotel Me too. room. And people are like, what? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so as I was alluding to travel time, you spent what I think is almost something that I wish everybody could do, is time traveling alone mm -hmm. with the dog, who yes. we will not bring up because oh. I know you miss him. Yeah. <laughs> traveling alone jumping in the truck, figuring out, oh, there's a place I can play, let's go. And talk about how that came about, how that, st how you started doing that, and then how that evolved. Well, it all started because one of my friends was getting married uh, in Minneapolis. And I looked at tickets, and they were so expensive. And I just thought to myself, you know, maybe I should tour over there. Maybe I could book some shows. And basically, if I lose less than $1,000, then I saved money because that was about what my ticket was going to be. So it was a little bit last minute, but I pulled it together. I ended up actually coming home with a little bit of cash. So it worked out great. And at that point, I thought, okay, I can do this. I mean, I can book shows. Maybe I should tour down to Nashville and, you know, maybe see what I could get started there. So that's what I started doing, uh, just me and my truck and, yeah, my little dog, Torrance. <laughs> The lesson that you learned, what is one thing? I mean, I'm sure there's many things that you feel that were you experienced that were new things that you learned, but what do you, would you say is the most important thing that you learned from that time that you still carry with you today? Well, I just think that I learned that I can be really self-sufficient and that I can make this happen you know, all on my own without help if I need to. And, um, you know, my mom raised me to be really independent, and I thank her for that. And on that tour, during those times, you know, when I was alone, I was setting up alone, you know, tearing down, driving everywhere by myself. Like, it really felt empowering to think, okay, if I can do this by myself, then think how easy it'll be when I have a team behind me. Yes. Yeah. It's something I've, I've been an advocate for for a long time is telling people go travel on your own but a lot of people are afraid of that yeah I don't think they're afraid of, of the alone time um, what do you think holds some people back of step and not just in, in music but in, in other areas of life that stepping out and taking that chance you know I'm not sure but plenty of people along the way would ask well you know who drove here who did you come with and they were so surprised that I was by myself, they would say to me, you're crazy, what are you doing? And honestly, to me, it, it didn't feel weird at all. It just made the most sense. Instead of buying a plane ticket, I was gonna drive and I was gonna 
pay my way by playing shows. That just made sense to me. So I, I really don't know what it is. I guess, you know, people like what they know. We all do. So sometimes it maybe can be a little nerve wracking to reach out and try something different. Yes, I think you're very right about that. What I thought was really cool, reading your material, the quotes that you had, listening to your music, a lot of people come into this chasing success, but you're chasing happiness, I think. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. I've been, that's part of why I went back to Montana instead of going to Nashville right after college, because I knew that I would be able to become a full-time musician much more quickly in Montana. You know, there's a lot less competition. (laughs) I'm pretty much (laughs) the only female country singer in my hometown. I mean, there is another band that had a guy and a girl sometimes sang. So there you go, my one competition. Um, So, but that was great because I was able to book a lot of shows. I had a part-time job for, I think, a year and a half. And I was able to quit and do music full-time. And that's what I want to do. Whatever scale, you know, however big it gets or doesn't get, as long as I'm playing music, I'm going to be happy. Mm-hmm. I, that's a, I think that's an important point. We say, as long as I'm doing this, yeah. no matter what, in what form it might come, that you're okay with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mentioned this to you before as well, so this isn't a new thing to, for you, but the quote I recently heard in a Roseanne Cash interview was she had seen her dad in all these different situations, but the place where he was most himself was on stage. Do you recognize yourself in that? Definitely. I sometimes, I don't know, I I just feel most comfortable there. That's the place where I'm not thinking about what I should say or, you know, who I should talk to or how I should dress or something. Like, that's, I just feel most comfortable on stage. And when I'm up there, it kind of all falls into place. And it's sort of, it's my happy place, I guess. <laughs> And I just feel, I feel comfortable there. What do you think is it about the stage that makes it so comfortable for you? Is it the sense of control? Is it the attention? Is it, what is it that's, that is there that you don't find anywhere else in your life? I'm not sure, you know, and I could be in front of 10 people or 10,000 people and I don't get nervous. Actually, it's funny. I get nervous when I'm done. It's after I've come off the stage, and that's when I start to think, and I start to think back, and I go, well, did I sound good? Like, well, did I mess something up? Or, like, did people like it? You know, and it, it's funny because when I'm on stage, none of that. And it's when I get off, I start to, like, shake. Um, <laughs> but I guess when I'm up there, I, I just, maybe I don't have time to think about anything else. And maybe it's, you know, it's an adrenaline rush, and maybe that's part of it. Yeah, because I, I think working with musicians myself, it's something that's, that confidence is very hard to teach. It has yeah. to come from within. Yeah. Do you see that as an extension of having been raised to be independent? I, it just carries through to your performance? I guess so. And you know what's funny is in the normal world, <laughs> I sometimes feel like, I'm a little bit shy. I don't think I always come off that way because I work really hard to, you know, try to reach out to people and talk to people. But inside, I do feel a little bit shy and a little bit like, oh, I don't know what to say or I, what, what do I do? <laughs> but on the stage, I never feel that. And I think that's part of it. I guess I was just made to be up there. Yeah, it just fits. Yeah. When you think about the things you've experienced in the past couple of years, is there anything that you wish you knew all those years ago? Well, yes and no. I mean, you always think if I could go back, I could probably do this much quicker, right? But at the same time, I mean, it's it's all a journey and I think that you're where you are because that's kind of where you're meant to be at the time. And you learn those lessons when you're ready to learn them? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, if you knew everything from the start, and you didn't have to go through a couple hard times, if you didn't have to learn a few things the hard way, you probably wouldn't. You might take it for granted a little bit, I guess. You might not appreciate it as much. So I just think that, you know, my path has been my path because that's what I was supposed to do. Yeah. What I think is really important for 
young artists is to keep control of a lot of the stuff as long as possible, like booking. Right. Or even their social media and their branding and all of that stuff to do it as long as possible until you're that big that you, it no longer makes sense for you to do it. Right. Because if you've done it yourself, if you know how hard booking is, then, because it is. Yeah. <laughs> then by the time you need a booking agent you'll know who the good booking agent is because you know what their job's supposed to be right oh booking is so hard let me tell you i used to when i would call out-of-state venues and places i'd never been i wanted to play there i would call and i would use my mom's name and she's remarried so she has a different last name so i would be like hey this is janet schwack and you know i'm kayla adams booking agent and totally just like kind of lie but the thing is if i call for myself People don't take me seriously. And it's it's such an ironic circle, and I think a lot of careers can be like this, where, well, you have to be at a certain level to get a booking agent, but you have to play shows to get there, but no one takes you seriously if you don't have one, and it's like this vicious cycle. So I used to do that, and my whole mindset was if they ever – you know, I got there and they said, you kind of sound like your booking agent. I'd be like, oh, that's my mom. That's why we sound similar. So I had this whole thing worked out. Um, and I guess, I don't know. I just, I was so passionate about it that I wasn't going to let not having an agent get in my way. Do you have any other tips? Like what can young artists do to get into venues? What, what did you find was the stuff that worked for you? Well, the thing that I always did is I always just did as much of what I knew how to do as possible. So in the beginning, it was a lot of just practicing and learning songs because that's what I knew how to do. And every time a door opened or an opportunity and I would get insight, I would learn something else, I would just keep pushing that as far as I could and just kind of keep learning. So I guess I just say don't let anything stop you. If you know how to play guitar, get better at it. If you know how to sing, get better at it. And the opportunities will follow and you'll learn as you go. Yeah, I think that's good. So the constant, and you got an education, you went to college and you did, you know, studied this for a yes. little while. How important do you think that part was? I think for me it was huge because I don't think as a vocalist I was ready to be thrown out into the world and after that year of touring where I had played seven to ten shows a week I was really nervous that if I didn't know how my voice was supposed to work and if I didn't know how to take care of it that I could be one of those people who ends up having to have surgery or you know being pulled off the road something like that so I really wanted to make sure that I knew exactly what I was doing and that I could take care of my instrument as well as get better. I didn't feel like I was ready to, you know, go out into the world just yet. Yeah. I think that's the self-awareness that's really important. Knowing yeah. that you still have to learn new things. That's huge, really. I, I mean, I think it's important because especially in something like this where people are so passionate, it can be really hard to be for someone else to be honest with you, especially the people that love you most. But sometimes that's what you need is that honesty because you don't want to be up there singing a song that doesn't fit your voice or that you don't sound good on because then people are going to think that you're bad and maybe you're not bad maybe that's just not a good song for you mm -hmm. or maybe if you practiced it you know it'd be great so I think that being able to like criticize yourself or accept that from other people can be really good because when you're so passionate it's hard to see past that you're too close to it yeah yeah, yeah. and we love it I mean we're very passionate about what we do that's why we do it so it can be really tough to hear like that song's not good enough, or your vocal part on this isn't good enough, but that is what makes you better. You've had a little bit more time to think about this question than other people have had, but I've been <laughs> finishing up with this one. Which songs would you put on the soundtrack to your life? Okay, I'm definitely sticking with I Will Survive. Um, <laughs> and then, um, you know, Probably like any of the songs on the Shadezy Knock on the Sky record. I love that album. I could just play it on repeat. But um, the Mine All Mine song, maybe especially, or Keep Me is probably my favorite song of all time. And I guess I don't know why I'm saying any of these songs, but just some songs I just really, really deeply connect with. And 
sometimes I can't even explain why, but it's usually like maybe the little more sad songs. Um, but the mine all mine, she's talking about how it's kind of all her fault. And I think that in relationships, it, it takes two always. And I think we're quick to blame other people, but the reality is if someone's not what you want, that's not just them, that's you. It's what you want too, you know? You don't want them. So I, that song kind of changed my outlook on that a little bit. Very cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.